since we're starting this all over, we'll just remember that now we're doing problems where we've got an initial x and an initial y, which does complicate matters somewhat, but we have ways of dealing with that. Okay, so, well, we're not really going to invite, well, we can invite the queen. She's not going to show up. Um, so what we have here is a zookeeper and an escaped monkey. It is kind of a crazy little problem, but that's okay. Aiming her tranquilizer gun at the monkey, the zookeeper kneels 10 meters from the light pole, which is 5 meters high. Tip of her gun is 1 meter above the ground. The monkey tries to trick the zookeeper by dropping a banana. Tricky monkeys. And then holds onto the light pole. At the moment the monkey releases the banana, the zookeeper shoots. If the tranquilizer dart travels at 50 meters per second, does the dart hit the monkey, the banana, or neither? So first we're going to draw the situation. And I would suggest you do this. So I've, I've done a, a pretty rough drawing, but it gives us an idea of where things are at. And I'm going to, as I usually do with these kind of problems, start off by listing variables on two axes. So I'm going to start with my, my displacements. Um, the delta x that I'm interested in, let's address this. There are lots of delta x's in this problem. I could find the velocity of the dart when it's 3 meters from the tip of the gun. I could find the velocity of the dart when it's 15 meters from the gun. I could find the velocity of the dart when it's 2 meters above the ground. We specify the delta x and delta y for the point in its flight where we're interested in it. So what do we really want to know? What we really want to know is when <coughs> it gets to delta x equals 10 meters, where is it on the y-axis? And this is one of the things we come back to again and again and again. And this is actually kind of a weird thing. When I started teaching physics and when I was doing, starting to do a lot of these problems, it was like a light bulb moment a couple months in when I went, oh, hey, for every position on the x-axis, there's a corresponding position on the y-axis, duh. So that's really what we're doing. That's when I say we're tying the axes together with time. That's what we're doing. So the delta x that we happen to be interested in is delta x equals 10.0 meters. And what we want to know is at that same moment, where's the delta y? <coughs> how far above the ground is this thing? Or how far above the tip of the gun is this thing? So what do we know? Well, we know that we have a vix. And what is vix? Well, we have a vi. We were not given an angle. But if we were, we can just call this theta for now, we know that vix would be equal to vi cosine theta. And we know that viy is equal to vi sine theta. So I'm just going to write those expressions in there. <coughs> now, furthermore, I know that there's no acceleration on the x, and eventually you'll stop writing this. Um, starting out, I find it's just kind of helpful to remember that to write that in your list of variables. If you don't, I'm not going to beat you up for it. And acceleration is negative g, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. I kind of ran out of room on that. OK. So I suppose it would be helpful if I knew what theta was. Do I have a way to find theta? What we know is that where she's aiming the gun is presumably at the light post, and I've drawn that a little badly, but we know that the tip of the gun is one meter above the ground and the light post is five meters above the ground. So this side of that triangle would be four meters. Messily written. So what we have is a triangle that's got a 10 meter x and a 4 meter y. Can we find theta given that information? Of course we can. Inverse tangent of opposite 4.0 meters over adjacent 10.0 meters gives us, not zero, gives us theta. 
Let's get our theta. I find my theta 21.8 and pocket change and I'm going to tuck that away over here. So at this point I think I've got enough information I can get rid of that and we're going to start down to the nitty-gritty which is the actual equations and calculations. With these problems I'm going to warn you don't put your numbers in too soon. We're very often not getting numbers, we're getting expressions. And a lot of times it's because we're missing something and we have to factor things out, we have to eliminate variables. So don't be over eager on that count. Well, what do we typically use as the bridge between our axes? Delta T. It's really convenient because T is moving the same way on the X and the Y axis. So if we go back to our sort of old standby, delta X equals VI x delta t plus one half a sub x delta t squared, we still get rid of this half of the equation because we still have no acceleration on the x-axis. So that gives us delta x equals vi x delta t or delta t equals delta x over vi x and then I'll get rid of that piece. So now that we know where that came from. Now on the y axis, I've got delta y, vi y, a sub y, and delta t. So the sort of natural go-to is my favorite expression, vi y delta t plus one half a sub y delta t squared. This is the point at which I'm going to go ahead and put in the expressions that I've written for VIY and VIX. I'm also going to put in the expression that I wrote for delta T. Okay, so at this point I've got an expression, and I don't have to solve for anything because I'm actually looking for delta Y. So that works out really well. It's just a bunch of messy algebra at this point. There are a few things I can do to simplify my life. First of which is the trick we saw yesterday, VI sine theta delta X over VI cosine theta. VI is going to cancel. Sine divided by cosine is equal to tangent. I guess I should finish this up first. Delta X squared, VI squared, cosine squared theta. So what I'm going to have next, let me not leave out bits. I've got tan theta delta x. I can do some combining work. I can distribute the 1 half a sub y across the expression in the parentheses. And I, I generally do that. So now we have a sub y delta x squared over 2 vi squared cosine squared theta. At this point, there's nothing there that we don't have, and we can just plug numbers in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I make liberal use of brackets and parentheses because they just help keep me from screwing up. They help me see what's where and um, do my order of operations correctly. Note that you should not round that theta before you do your calculations. Okay, so I've got as a sort of intermediate step 4.00, etc out to 1 plus a negative 0.2275. Um, a note, you could do the dimensional analysis on everything in here, and it should come out to meters. Um, and you would expect that because we're looking for a delta y, so you would hope that it would come out to meters. If you do the dimensional analysis and find that it doesn't, you have a problem, <laughs> algebraically. So what do we get? Okay, so I get a raw value of 3.7724, etc meters. What does that mean? Does that tell us exactly where the bullet's at? The dart, I'm sorry. We're not shooting the monkey, we're just sedating it. So what it tells me is that the dart is 3.77, etc. meters above the tip of the gun. So this is where you have to go back to the original situation and think about what the numbers mean. You can get numbers and not know what to do with them. It doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Let's, I'm going to blow up my drawing. So how far above the ground is the dart? Well, one meter plus the 3.77. I think we get three sig figs, right? Three, two, 
two. 4.0, so two sig figs. So dart at 10 meters delta x is 4.8 meters above ground. Now the question was, does it hit the monkey or does it hit the banana? Well, where's the monkey? Five meters above the ground. So by 20 centimeters, assuming the monkey has got its little butt hung up as tight as it can, it misses the monkey. The next part of the question is, does it hit the banana? How do we figure that out? Well, the banana is just falling. It's a straight free fall problem. So if the banana starts out at five meters above the ground, can we figure out the time at which the bullet passes the 10 meter mark on the, on the x-axis? Yeah. At that moment, dart, I'm sorry, I keep calling it a bullet. We're not shooting monkeys. We're just sedating them. Um, at that moment in time, can we figure out where the banana is? Yeah. I'm not going to walk you through that. I'll give away the punchline. They sedate the banana. It's rather anticlimactic, but the banana has a very quiet afternoon just laying in its cage. So the big thing to see here is that this is the kind of work you're going to do. Now, I, I do want to actually, I'm going to stop this and I'll do another video because I want to go back to the bike and creek problem and do what I intended to yesterday before I turn you loose to do these on your own. So we'll, we'll stop this and start a new video.